Hi, my name is Rawa Aja, author of The F Team. The F Team is about a young boy named Tariq Nader, who's the leader of his wolf pack um, and attends Punchbowl Boys. He's been asked by the new principal to join a rugby league competition with his wolf pack. Uh, but the only catch is that the other half of the team is made up uh, of boys from Cronulla a place in which he thinks is enemy territory. So the scene I'll be reading now is where they first meet this new principal. We open the doors to find four lonely chairs facing the stage beside boxes of paper. It was dark, all the window blinds were now permanently closed just in case we made the news again. We sat and waited and waited, but no one showed up. I'm out, Huss eventually said, picking up his things. This new principal is already wasting my time. Your time belongs to me now, we heard a deep voice echo. Is that the shaitan? Ibi whispered, squeezing my arm. PJ's afro puffed a little higher as he looked to me for answers. The stage curtains moved and a shadowy figure walked our way. Huss slowly sat down and whispered, Is that him? I shrugged, confused. A tall, muscular man stopped in front of us. You leave when I tell you to leave. Is that clear? If someone had a photo of all our faces, you'd see four boys with their jaws on the ground. We were expecting one of those textbook old principals with a wrinkled face. Not this guy. He wore a blue Ralph Lauren polo and had a tattoo sleeve on his right arm. His closely cropped blonde hair and shiny Rolex were anything we were used to. He spoke with an odd accent. Ibi leaned over to me. I'm seeing what you're all seeing, yeah? Okay, seriously, your breath stinks, I said, palming his chubby face away from me. The tall man sat down and looked at his watch. Like I said, your time is my time now, so let's not waste any of it and get straight to the point. My name is Thomas Archibald, but you can call me Mr Archie. PJ and Ibi nodded like they were back in kindergarten, still mesmerised by this muscular man who was supposedly our new principal. Huss crossed his arms and looked at the rest of us. So this guy is our new principal. Don't talk until I tell you to talk, Mr Archie snapped. Believe me, you don't want to come up against me. You lose 11 times out of 10. I could see Ibi using his fingers to work out how 11 out of 10 was even possible. Stop counting, you haywen, I whispered. He'll tell you off for being that dumb. Well let's, get, well, let's get through these, eh? Mr. Archie said, lifting the box of papers like it weighed nothing. He picked up a red folder and looked at Ibi first. Ibrahim Nasser. Student ID 617 broke into the canteen and not only took all the hot food, but then resold it at lunchtime, chased three casual teachers out of the school and broke the only library window. Twice. Sir, the boys made a bet that I couldn't fit my body through the window. I had to prove them wrong. It also says here that this school has had five different canteen owners in the last six months. Ibi scratched his head and squinted out of the corner of his eye. I think so. Oh, like, it could be six. I'm not 100%. If you want, you can ask my cousin Maz. He definitely knows. Mr. Archie stared at Ibi for a while, probably trying to figure out if he was taking the piss. He must have eventually realised that, that Ibi couldn't take the piss, even if he tried. PJ Malofa, ID 602, he continued. The lad who put scissors on top of fans in three different classrooms, with four lads injured and taken to the hospital as a result. Everyone dared me, sir. If you haven't picked it up yet, our school basically ran on bets and dares. We always wanted to see who was willing to do what. Plus, it made the time fly by during class. I could see where this was going, and we were pretty screwed. Mr. Archie held a separate red folder with Huss's name in bold. Hussein Hader, ID 666. You set a classroom on fire and prank called the police, resulting in bomb squads entering the school on two different occasions. You sell cigarettes in the playground, but let me guess, the lads dared you. <clears throat> Huss shrugged. Yeah, but even teachers buy cigarettes off me. Mr. Archie's piercing green eyes were now on me. And last but not least, Tariq Nader, ID 658. Top of all his classes, Best and fairest three times in a row, captain of the under 17s footy team. Not one single bad thing on his record. The boys all look confused. He smiled. You're very smart getting those lads to do the dirty work while you stay unnoticed behind the scenes. Yeah, so you've skipped a few days and egged the girls' high school down the road, but I believe you paid for that today. I don't get anyone to do my dirty work, I said, sitting up. So you admit you have some dirt on your hands. Damn it, I fell straight into that trap. 
like the time you jumped the fence and hung out by the station or the time you forged your parents' signatures for those detention slips. He spent the next 20 minutes reading out more from our files, even things we had forgotten about. The time Ibi and Huss locked Mrs. Abdullah in the classroom, or the time PJ punched through Mr. Jeffrey's car window because he lost in a game of footy. Finally, he flipped the files shut. My point is, boys, I know you better than you know yourselves. He stood up and walked around like a lawyer, interrogating us as if we were on trial. How? Huss asked, laughing to himself. Mr. Archie stopped and stared at him. I've been watching you for all of term one. You may not have noticed me amongst those men in suits, but I certainly noticed you. He went on and on about how he had been watching us like an eagle hunting for prey, which, if you ask me, was borderline weird. Like, I get it, he wanted to act all tough, but he needed to stop referring to us as his prey. I mean, that's weird, right? Just when we thought he had finally finished, he handed us a pile of every negative article that had been written about our school. So this school is the fifth worst school in New South Wales and is now considered at risk for closure if you lads don't change your behaviour. We have until midterm three to clean up our school's reputation and be on the safe side. Ow, he just got here. He doesn't get to be part of us just yet. I knew our school was doing badly, but I never thought that it could actually close down. We weren't saints or angels, but we take a bullet for each other and our school. Just ask Sammy from year 11, who tackled a guy and almost pulled his head through a wall because he raised his voice at our office ladies. No one gets away with being disrespectful on our territory, except for us. Yes, I know, it's hypocritical, but that doesn't change the fact that this place was a home to us. Mr. Archie stopped in front of Huss, who still had a smirk on his face. It may mean no more of this school, Mr. Hader but you still have to go to a school, a separate school, which the government will choose for you. Huss shuffled back into his seat and crossed his arms like he had heard this all before. There was something about the way Mr. Archie spoke. He was so calm and cold, like a gangster with manners. The ones from the movies who excuse you to kiss your family goodbye before they throw you into the ocean, gagged and chained. So that was part of chapter four. If you want to read more, just visit Westwards um, or any bookstore. That was the F team. Thank you for listening. See ya.